What is up guys, Matt here, coming at you with a brand new build. This is the Dementor SS from Hard Park. Really excited to finally get this thing together. Loving the look of it. You'll see I got two different sets of wheels here. These are the original 1.8s from Hard Park. And I got these, then he brought out this other set, the Titanium, I believe they are. And so I bought those and when I got them, I was like, I'm gonna powder coat the ring well i was really trying to run these like this you can see how i've got them flipped here but just to give me a little more narrow truck you know i've kind of been more on the narrow with lately just makes some lines a little easier and so i was going to try to keep it fairly narrow and you can see with these wheels with the hub mounted like this um it it sits pretty good and works but I, I like the look of these wheels much better like this. So I'm thinking I'll just have two sets, one for a narrow width, one for a wide width. So uh, not 100% sure which ones I'm going to start with running today. But I absolutely love how that purple kind of looks with the green. And uh, I think I may have to go that route. I just I prefer the more narrow width. But anyways... Uh, it does limit my steering a tiny bit at times. I will barely catch the shock there. I need another set of hard park shocks for the front. Uh, they've just been kind of out of stock. If you don't know, the hard park shocks here have this sleeve on them that kind of spins if you do catch them. So you can see how well that works. And uh, I really like that, especially for the front. You know, I usually kind of limit my front, run a shorter shock anyways. And then I go along in the rear to make up for it so you can get all that flex, you know, and still have a very capable rig. So this is the regular Dementor here, Dementor SS. We're going to get to some of the goods inside here. So this body is just an AX24 body. I just did a very quick green paint job on it to have something to run. But you can see how low everything sits on this thing. I managed to keep everything pretty much below the transmission, um, which is pretty nuts if you think about it. So it should perform pretty well. Uh, my only thing is I'm a little limited on my up travel here, the way I've got everything right now. It, it twists good. You know, it flexes pretty dang good. I don't really like much more flex than that. And I mean, you can roll this thing all the way up on its side. Look at that. <laughs> it will just balance there. Nuts. So um, I may have to do something with that. My main problem is I made a tray. That actually helped a little right there, just getting that out of the way. <laughs> so I made a, a little clear tray right here. I don't know if you can kind of see it. But... I just kind of used some bread ties to fasten that to the upper links because I, didn't, I was out of small, small zip ties. So I just used some bread ties I had and that lets the ESC and receiver just kind of float there on the links. So it keeps those really low. Um, I could possibly just make a tray that goes from like here to here and kind of do the same thing but um it's just barely off the drive shaft it lets everything move enough hopefully and um i don't know i'm gonna find out today so this thing has took me a while uh because i wanted to run this battery on axle servo mount setup from hard part this is made for the super eights i talked about this before i made it fit the ogrc I did a lot of kind of Dremel work inside here, notching this out. I had to make this much deeper to fit the OGRC axles. I actually had to shave down the top of the axle itself, the diff cover and the diff, um, you know, all of this area on the top. I shaved it a little bit to get this to fit and uh, it actually works fairly. <laughs> so I made these steering links um, just out of some 
some rod on Amazon and rod ends from Amazon. And I can link all that in the description. Very simple to do. That's how I make most of my links. You'll see like on here, that's what I made these with. And it works really well. I went with the links that came with this just because it was much easier and they are very nice bent. Lots of clearance on these links. So stuck with those on this build, but it did make the steering links. Um, to be able to run these wheels like they are, I'm going to talk about that a little bit. So originally, to space these out just a little bit, to run them this way, uh, again, because I was trying to stay narrow, but with just a regular hex, it would not work at all. I couldn't really clear the battery or the shock at all. Um, so I went with some of these old style, like millstone hex, which basically you have to use the barrel nut style uh, wheel nut. I went with those and it worked perfect. Really, it, it got this setting exactly kind of how I wanted it. I have good clearance. These OGRC axles have a really good turning angle. You can see there. And um, pretty nice. I really like that narrow setup, but I love the look of this. So I'm, I'm torn on that. But anyways, so you can see I had to run this style hex just because a regular hex was way too tight. But with this man it works great and i was kind of surprised that these fit with the low blow knuckles and my weight hangers and everything and, and didn't rub it all fits and works it hits maybe the hard park logo on this hanger just a tiny bit uh, but spins freely so no issue with that So I'm running uh, the AGFRC A20 servo. Uh, I just had one here. I've been running the OGRC and the Enjora a lot lately. I had this one sitting, so that's what went in here. Fury Tech Lizard Pro ESC, just a mini receiver for my GT5 and um, the Micro Komodo motor. Had this motor and transmission here, so it was freed up. That's what went in here. No real decision making there. It's a nice smooth slow crawl on it, of course. Uh, Hard Park Skid comes with this kit. The only issue I really had with this kit at all is these little things that go inside some of the 3D printed parts. All of the ones on the skid were coming out on me. That one looks like it might be coming out a tiny bit right there. When you screw into them, they, they just pulled out of the plastic. So you may want to make sure and See, see how that just went back together. So definitely want to put some glue on those things or check them. Uh, all of mine have came out, came out of these. So I glued those. These came out. I glued a couple, but I guess I missed that one. So definitely check that. Um, with the OGRC axles, I couldn't use the rear axle hangers from Hard Park. They won't bolt up right. So. I don't have the extra hanging weight in the rear, so hopefully I'm heavy enough in the rear as is with these axles and stuff. These are the plus five, um, just by the way. I didn't mention that. So I went with that just to give me a little extra width right off the bat because I knew this was going to have to be pretty wide for these axles. Um, everything else, hard park, come with the chassis, all of these spacers, body mounts, everything. Um, some stock AX24 shocks in the rear. They're just really smooth and free. A little stiffer spring I put on there that I just had. Uh, I may end up cutting a cool, couple coals off of that so that they kind of sit down here a little and just have a little bit of travel. But you can see they hit the, basically where the bump stop comes on these shocks. They bottom out right in there. So they're sitting a little lower anyway, see that? So um, I'm going to try it like it is. The front shocks, I don't even remember where I got those. These are some oil-filled shocks, and uh, they're pretty good. They don't leak. 
but uh, very limited how I could run the front shocks. For one, I hit the servo here, so I would have had to change something up really to uh, to run that in a higher position, but uh, I kind of like it down low anyways. I think it's gonna work out. And it, it's pretty wild how this thing will just like balance almost completely sideways. And when it does tip, it stays on its side, especially with these big wheels. But um, I did go with just uh, an OGRC link riser in the rear instead of the printed one that comes with the hard park chassis. Uh, the printed stuff, I don't have good luck with it usually. Just like this servo mount, I've already halfway broke the tab on the back here where the links mount. Just running the screw in, it just kind of cracked a little. Um, so like 3D printed stuff doesn't work for me. <laughs> I strip the screws, I break the holes. I, it's just, I, I can't hardly do it. So um, I went with the, this is the brass OGRC link riser. And that's pretty much it. Running just a tiny palm power battery on the axle. Lets me get enough clearance there to get by. This thing crazy smooth. Let me find the transmitter and we'll fire it up. All right, so you can see there, got good steering. And of course, the crazy slow crawl of the Fury Tech. That's pretty much the build. So I'm gonna take this thing out, get a little running, hopefully in a new spot and a lot of fun today, I hope. So let's go check this thing out. One more thing real quick just so you guys can kind of see how I've been doing these tires. Uh, the OGRC comes with this inner ring. I've been leaving that out and these foams fit these wheels pretty good. And when I go to cut this, it doesn't have to be clean. You can see that I bought the guide that um, Hard Park has and it does help if you wanna just cut around it. Uh, but for me, I really like just once I knew where to cut on these, it's easier to not have that in the way. So basically, if you just go a little bit below the lettering on these tires, you'll be fine. And like I said, it doesn't have to be clean because you can kind of hide it behind the, the bead lock ring. So I just grab one of these, start the scissors in, and cut right around underneath the lettering. And then it comes out like this. The foam fits perfect. And then this goes right on the wheel so that's it uh, no real crazy guesswork no stitching tires together anything like that so uh, pretty simple you know i'm not sure how long i'm going to stick with these larger wheels because you're really not it's not like a massive difference in your tire size or anything so this is just a pin tire mounted on a regular wheel and there you go um the advantage to these i've mentioned before is being able to run these hangers really and the looks they look pretty cool um, i will probably eventually go back to something like this i just want to run these for a little bit check them out but uh, for me i think i would prefer having more sidewall anyways um, but these do look cool and it's something fun to try out so let's go try it out all right so my first trip out with this was anything but a success um lots of things not working on this one um mostly i learned right off the bat i gotta flip the hubs on these wheels um, as much as i like the look of them deep dish the scrub is terrible on the steering um, it's too putting too much stress on everything just did not like how it drove at all it's too wide i don't like making my 24s into 18s really um so a lot of things right there. I just need to flip those hubs. And then I definitely need some more weight down low. Um, the front is probably okay with the way I have everything right now. But the rear is very light. Got to get some weight in the rear. And I'm not so sure that I'm really going to stick with these big wheels for very long. Um, I just don't feel like these tires are hooking as well as they normally do being stretched like they are cut thin whatever um i like a little more squish to them so 
you know, I'm not going to give up on these wheels yet. I love the look of them and stuff, but, um, you know, I, I build like this for me, honestly, I normally run like the swampers or something on my, um, Dementor. Look at the flex right here though. The thing like rolls the rear axle all the way over on its side and didn't loop out. Stayed planted. Um, but yeah, I normally run like the Swampers or something a little smaller on my Dementor because these things have such good clearance in the belly and stuff that you don't need a real huge tire to give it more clearance. So you can get away with a little smaller tire, which lowers everything a little more, but still have that really good belly clearance. So I love this chassis setup. I love how everything's kind of mounted in it. You know, I kept everything really low as possible. Um but this servo mount didn't work for me um i took a couple small hits and i snapped it right off um you know maybe my fault because i kind of i i grinded on it a little bit thinned it out a little uh i knew it wasn't going to work me and 3d printed parts just don't work and especially on something like the servo that's you know got a lot of power on it and taking some hits like it is with that servo and everything being exposed i just had a feeling that thing was going to break and so i'm just going back to a regular servo mount i can't <laughs> deal with my day being cut to five minutes um with this thing because i snapped another another servo mount so um i had actually ordered a couple more because i kind of was afraid it would happen eventually <laughs> but i didn't think it would happen that quick so i'm um, just ditching that these small little batteries i run i'll find somewhere else to tuck it away and it'll be fine it's really not that much weight on the front axle it's not like a 10 scale you know where you're throwing a pretty good size battery on that axle these things weigh like nothing this is a palm power 120 <laughs> mah battery so it's tiny um i just don't feel like these tires are hooking right and I don't know if it's needing a little more weight or if it's being stretched like they are kind of. Um, just a lot of stuff that needs to be done to this one. And, uh, you know, I think I'm going to like the chassis. Obviously, I love my Dementor. It's probably my favorite to drive right now. And it pulls some really cool, like, hanging lines like I was trying to do right here. You'll see this. I'll just loop out. Boom. That needs a little more weight in the rear for sure. Setting up high like it is. Um I was able to get down that first step, but I couldn't get the second like hanger line and my Dementor will do that. No problem. So it's just probably a matter of getting a little more weight, but could end up being some smaller tires in the end. Um, just <laughs> got to do some work. You know, these things don't always turn out perfect. And I, I just really wanted to show you guys that. I mean, it's, it's kind of a good chance to show you like um, you know, I have people say they get frustrated because they, they build the exact same thing that I built or try to, and it, and it doesn't, doesn't work out, but you know, slight changes here and there, it, it doesn't always work out as soon as you build something. So that's why you take it out, run it like this. And now I know some things I need to do to this. I want to get it up and running for this coming week. I'm going to be out of town, hopefully hitting some new spots. So, um, just got to get back to work, you know, and, um, I really like, the look of this thing i got an idea for the wheels just to keep somewhat of this look and change things up but definitely got to get a little more narrow a little more weight and uh we'll see where it goes so you guys let me know what you think about this one it's it's fun you know it's a new build but you'll see right here this is a spot i believe i run maybe five minutes total with this thing and then i kind of take a fall here and just snap the servo mount so this hit right there did it in so um i'm ditching that going back to regular servo mount you guys let me know what you think about this one i promise i'll get more time with it definitely this coming week hopefully next week whatever you want to call it and um having fun just trying things out so let me know what you think about this build um and lots of stuff coming up i appreciate everybody peace